Welcome to the Hour of Power with Robert Schuller. Brought to you from the world's first walk-in, drive-in inspiration center in Garden Grove, California. Today, Dr. Schuller shares his guidelines for abundant living that will add meaning to your life today and every day. Stay tuned for your Hour of Power. the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. gift for you today. It's a new book. I'm in the process of writing it. This is the title. This is the cover. Guidelines to Abundant Living. God wants you to have a life filled with an abundance of joy and power this year. Thank you, God, for what you are about to pour into our life this morning. We will not be the same people 60 minutes from now that we are in this moment. We will change. And through your inspiration, we will change for the better. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord of all ye nations. Oh, praise him, all ye people. Oh, praise the Lord of all ye nations. Oh, praise him, all ye people. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
preparation for Dr. Schuler's message, hear these words of the Psalmist David as found in the Holy Bible. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is thy name in all the earth! When I look at thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast established, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou dost care for him? Yet thou hast made him little less than God, and dost crown him with glory and honor. Thou hast given him dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is thy name in all the earth. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Almighty God, our creator and preserver, when earth and air and sky are full of beauty, heralding blessing and honor and praise, our hearts would not be thankless, nor our voices silent. We bless you, O God. Your mercy is boundless, far surpassing our understanding. Your love is infinite far exceeding even the purest of our human lives. From your generous hand you have showered blessing on our every human need, and in Jesus Christ you have done a thing greater than any other thing that has ever been done, turning our sorrow into gladness, our pain into victory, making our lives richer, our homes sweeter, and our friendships dearer. We praise you, O God. In the silence of this moment, we bring to you persons both known and unknown to us, some in sunshine, some in shadow, some suffering in mind, others in body or in their vocations, that they and their loved ones may be delivered from fear and anxiety, and in every extremity trust in you, for you have said, Cast your care upon me, for I care for you. Accept this our morning prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
It's such a beautiful, beautiful morning here in Southern California. And if you're worshiping with us on television, I want you to see the happiest people in the state. They're right here in this church. And that's because Christ lives in their heart and in their life. Now let's welcome those who are worshiping in the drive-in church by waving at them if you're worshiping out there and shooting a smile through the windshield or through the side window at those worshiping around you. And in the sanctuary, turn around and why don't you greet those that are behind you by turning around, shaking hands and saying, God loves you, and if you're very brave, add, I love you too. <laughs> This is the threshold of a great new year, and I'm very excited because I have some exciting things to share with you. Still, from my basic research from last summer's season of study, I bring now to the new year a new book of seven sermons, which I believe are the seven most important beliefs that are the bulwark of my personal life. If you were to ask me, Schuler, what do you really believe about God? I would put it forth in seven powerful positive statements that I'm putting in this new book entitled Guidelines to Abundant Living. And Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. What do I really, really believe? I believe that God's presence was before me, it follows after me, and it surrounds me now. I believe that I can enjoy the abundance of God's guidance, wisdom, and presence. That's chapter one in Abundant Living. Chapter two, I believe that I can not only enjoy God's presence, but I can enjoy God's peace. That the tumultuous negative emotions that would rob my moment now of joy, these negative emotions, fear, hate, guilt, hostility, jealousy, resentment, these emotions can be squeezed out of my life like dirty water out of an old rag, and God can come in and fill me with the positive emotions of love, hope, courage, confidence. God's peace, I believe in it. God's presence, I've got it. Chapter 3, God's power. Power to dream and power to win. In life. There are seven chapters. I hope you can be with us in the drive-in sanctuary, the walk-in sanctuary, or the television congregation for the next seven weeks and invite your friends either to worship with you in the sanctuary, the car, or in your home. And if you're watching or listening, write to us, Hour of Power, and let me send to you this beautiful hard-covered jacket and each chapter as they appear in the seven powerful principles that give you the faith for abundant living. And it'll be a great new year for you, I promise. And then if you uh, weren't with us last Sunday, we have a beautiful new calendar which we've designed to make your whole life a victorious year. The very cover should be a tranquilizing experience. It's the Good Shepherd statue here in the green pastures and still waters of this church. Every Sunday when you're in the sanctuary, you look out and see it, and in the car, you behold it, and if you're in the television congregation, you see it too. Alongside of this beautiful picture are the words, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And each month, we have picked out 12 positive, powerful Bible verses, and we connect them to 12 positive thinking statements. And if you will live by these month by month, your life will change. Your year will be bright. This is the calendar that can he keep your wall bright and your heart glittery all through the year. So it's a beautiful morning. It's a wonderful new year. And now let us thank God by bringing to him from all of the churches, here, there, and out in the television congregation, our tithes and morning offerings. May God bless you as you give. <laughs>
Good morning. We're glad to have you join us for today's inspiring service. In just a few moments, Dr. Schuler will openly and honestly share the very heart of his personal faith, drawn from 21 years of his pastoral experience. All of you who want and need a strong faith for this year, today's message is especially for you. Today's message is one from a series of seven, which will cover the seven building blocks of faith. Many of you have asked and want to know, what does Dr. Schuler really believe? You've asked, what is the heart and power of Dr. Schuler's faith? Today and in the weeks ahead, you will learn these secrets as Dr. Schuler sums up his total faith. This is without question the most profound message series as it will touch the seven strongest themes and statements taken from the Holy Bible. You will want to have today's message and all of the messages that will follow, which can be placed in this attractive vinyl cover. It will be sent to you postpaid if you will simply write and ask for your copy. All you have to do is to write to Dr. Schuler and request the first message and the binder on guidelines to abundant living. Just address your letter to Hour of Power, Garden Grove, California. That's Hour of Power, Garden Grove, California. I know you will find this a practical source with guidelines that will not fail you if you will follow them. Here is a sure way for an abundant life. Send for your own permanent copy today. And remember to send for your Hour of Power calendar that Dr. Schuler has described. It provides inspiration through the scripture texts and possibility thinking quotations personally selected by Dr. Schuler. The Hour of Power calendar will make the days in this year really count. Write today for your calendar while the supply lasts. That address again is Hour of Power, Garden Grove, California. And now let us return to our service. <laughs> Father, these offerings and gifts are our way of saying thanks to you for your life-changing power for each one of us. We are grateful today that you can do for us what we can never do for ourselves. And we pray that through these gifts that you will, by your miracle-working power, perform your wonders in the lives of people throughout the world. Hear this, our prayer, in the name of Christ. Amen.
God's presence behind you, in front of you, and around you. If you can feel it, and know it, and believe it, and have it, and hold to it, you can face anything, anytime, and win, and really win. Seven things I really believe in. This morning, I share with you chapter one in the book, Guidelines to Abundant Living. I really believe that God is before me, behind me, and around me. One thing I know, I never asked to be born. I did not choose my father, nor my mother. I did not choose my race, nor the color of my skin, nor the language that I learned as a child in my family home. I did not choose the community where I was born and raised. I did not choose the school where I went in the first grade and on through high school. It was not until college that I made a choice. But even then, there were forces around me that caused me to select the college that I attended and other forces that came into my life and influences and persons over whom I had little control, that caused me to move in the direction in which I have moved. One thing I believe, and that is that there is a sense of destiny in my life. And the same is true for you and for you. You never ask to be born. You are God's idea. You are God's dream. The Bible verse in this chapter that I hold before you, Isaiah 52, verse 12. The Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel 
will be your rear guard. Uh, we spent a few days this week in the holidays uh, up at our mountain place up in Big Bear, California. And uh, it's been some time since we've been up there. And so the entire family went. I, I have five children, you know. The youngest are two little girls, seven and five years of age. And when they heard we were going to go up for two days to the mountains, they began packing their things. And we packed the whole car. Mother was the last one to come into the car, of course, as is usually the case, because she's always taking care of the last little details. Well, you wouldn't believe it if you didn't see our station wagon. Father, son, daughter, 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 daughter. I got four of them. I, I think I should explain. Some of you don't know me. We planned our family, three children, spaced them four years apart so I wouldn't have two in college at the same time. <laughs> really, we did. And then about eight years passed, and I began to think, maybe if we thought positively and had a fourth child, it might be another son. So we practiced the power of positive thinking. <laughs> and we had a girl. <laughs> And so we couldn't let her grow up alone. We gave her a little sister. Well, God did, but we had a hand in it, I assure you. So that's our family, and all five children and father were packed in our station wagon. Then, of course, in came our poodle. On top of that, we have a recent addition in our home, in case you don't know, and that's a collie, a collie puppy, a six-month-old collie puppy, which means he's that big. So we all piled in the car, and everybody brought their own suitcases, and then Mother came in. And it, there was hardly room for her, bless her heart. And she said, what are those two huge boxes back there? And I said, I don't know. Well, she said, who loaded the car? I said, we all did a little bit. And we just didn't have room for those two big boxes. She looked in them, and inside those two big boxes were the children's toys. The two little girls decided what they thought they should carry with them up to the two days in the mountains. They had three dolls in each one. They had paper books. They had colors. You wouldn't imagine what they didn't pack in their boxes. In one box, they had one of the plastic Bozo the Clown. You know, they're about four feet high when you were all blown up, four feet high, and you punched them. They had Bozo the Clown, half-winded jammed in this one box. We tried to assure them, you don't use Bozo the Bouncing Clown in the snow. We finally got them to unload half of the stuff. It took 15 minutes to convince them. They didn't have to drag it all along. Now here we are at the turn of the years. An old year has passed, a new year is coming. How many of you are not planning to carry with you into the new year a bunch of excess luggage. Just a pile of old stuff that you'll never use. It'll only be a drag and a weight on you. Think of some of the old hurts, some of the old heartaches, some of the old griefs. A poet once said, I wish there was some wonderful place called the land of beginning again where all of our cares and all of our heartaches and all of our poor selfish griefs could be dropped like a shabby old coat at the door and never put on again. Well, there is that land of beginning again, and that land of beginning again is called now. Now. Drop a lot of those old unnecessary things that clutter your mind and heart. God gives us a brand new year. I took my two-mile hike this morning uh, just as the dawn was breaking. And here in Southern California, the sky was blue, the, the sun came bursting over Saddleback Mountains with a resplendent glory of gold. And the air is sweet and clean. Really, it is. Believe it or not, pure. What a glorious new day. What a great new year. What a beautiful land of beginning again called now. N-O-W, now. The point is, you didn't ask the sun to rise this morning. 
You didn't ask for the new year to come. You didn't ask for the new day. God gave it to you. It's his plan. It's his dream. There is a destiny that is in your life more than you know. There is a power and a force that is moving you steadily, surely, steadfastly onward. And it is a good force. God. This Bible verse, Isaiah 52, 12, the Lord will go before you and God will be your rear guard. What it says is simply this. God is your rear guard and God is your vanguard. Now, perhaps there are some that don't understand the analogy here because it does come from a scene of battle, oddly enough. In the time of warfare, in the Israelites' campaigns in the wilderness, you know, and across the promised land, they always had the vanguard and they had the rear guard. The vanguard, they were the scouts that went on ahead to explore the unexplored territory and to report a plan to move by. But there was also the rear guard. As they swept along, the rear guard picked up the pieces, made sure they didn't leave anything valuable behind. And so out of that context comes this sentence, God is our vanguard and God is our rear guard. Let's begin by looking at God the rear guard, for instance, because I really believe this with all my heart, that God is the rear guard of my life. I keep moving along as you do, sometimes living at too fast a pace doing things incompletely, and God follows up and finishes what I do in a halfway measure. Be confident of this, that God who has begun a good work in you will complete it. How many things, if we were to take time and look back at the old year, how many jobs did we do half completed? And we'll never find time to do them completely because there are new projects today and new projects waiting tomorrow. To me, it's a comfort to know I did what I could, the best that I knew how. And if it's unfinished, Schuler, forget it. God will have to finish it. I won't have time. And in that, I find rest. He finishes the unfinished jobs. That's rear guard action. And I see it happening again and again and again. I preach a message, a sermon, and when it's finished, I tell myself, why, Schuler, didn't you make a point of this? Why didn't you remind your friends of this idea? And I feel sometimes a sermon is a half-finished job. And people will come to me and tell me that through it all, they found what they needed. And I come to the conclusion that the Holy Spirit of the living God, working in their mind after the message was all finished, and through the rest of the day and the week that followed, finished the task that Schuler did halfway. And that's how I have the courage to keep preaching, frankly, because I know God is at the rear guard, finishing the job and picking up the broken pieces if we were to look back at the last year and pause to think we could recall someone that we hurt with a word or a deed or a deed left undone, time and distance and communications keep us apart and we would want to heal the hurt in that heart but do not know how to make contact. But there's God in the rear guard comforting the one we cannot comfort and giving them the, the positive hope that is beyond us. God is that kind of a God. I read a poem once years ago. I cannot recall the title nor the author, but it was a poem about a father who sent his disobedient and unrepentant son to bed. And the little boy cried himself to sleep and a long time later, the father in the night went to his son's bedroom to check on the boy, and he saw the face still covered with tears and the pillow wet, and the little boy sound asleep. But what the little fellow had done before he crawled in bed and cried himself to sleep, 
He had gathered on the little table beside his bed some of his treasured toys, a little toy knife, a few shells, an old penny, a nickel, and some checkers and a bag of marbles. And these treasured little toys were his only friends <laughs> that comforted him as he cried himself to sleep. And unknowingly, to him, Father came, wiped the last tear that had not yet dried, and kissed him and said, Good night, my son. And so God does it with you, with me, long after we think he and everybody has forgotten. God is always the last one to leave the party. Make sure that all of the pieces are picked up and the hurts are comforted. I have a very dear old friend named Edith Bond, and she's been like a mother to me ever since I've been in California. She's old, she's very sick, she lives in a rest home, and as often as I can, I drop in to see her, and she hugs me, and we kiss each other. And I always keep saying to her, Mrs. Bond, or I call her Mom, I say, Mom, don't worry. I will never forget you. And her eyes brighten, and she holds me. She says, Do you mean that, Bob? I say, I mean that. I will never forget you. In the Bible we read, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I promise you, Mom, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God is that way to me and to you. The rear guard action, always there until everyone else has left the scene. Befriending, picking up, and restoring and paving the way for restoration. That's what he does. You see, God does not destroy. God does not believe in annihilation. God does not believe in destruction. God does not believe in discarding. But God believes in redeeming. And he takes the most broken human being and rebuilds and reshapes, and rehabilitates, and restores. There are many people living today in the United States that are without limbs, and some without eyes. Some of them fought in World War I, and some in World War II, and some in the Korean conflict, and others in the later war. Well, the years pass, and some of these veterans live in hospitals. We have one here, the Long Beach Veterans Hospital. And life goes on. New towns are built, new babies are born, and the masses of people forget these broken bodies that still live. But there are people there that never forget these broken veterans. There are nurses and doctors and fellow patients, and chaplains, and human beings like members of this church who make it a point to be there in the rear guard action, comforting, rehabilitating, restoring. God treats us this way. The Lord is my shepherd. He restoreth my soul. God is the last one to leave. He is in the rear guard. I remember suddenly uh, Napoleon, you know, when he retreated from Russia and retreated back to Paris, left the rear guard action in the hands of Marshal Ray. Months passed. The army had all arrived in Paris. The battle was finished. And there were some soldiers, lead officers, in an officer's club one night. And they were wondering, whatever happened to the rear guard? And someone said, how about Marshal Ray? Did he ever make it? And someone said, no one ever heard from him again. Apparently, they were all wiped out. And 
And then the door opened, and in the room stepped a gaunt man, haggard, bones over skin, hollow holes in the head for eyes, sunken, blank stare. And he wore the tattered uniform of a French general. And everyone recognized the uniform and stood up and said, who are you? And he said, I am Marshal Ray. And they gasped and saluted. And one ventured the question, but Marshal, where is the rear guard? And he said, I am the rear guard. There are no others. And as Christians, we look to the cross and we see Jesus Christ there. We see him. And in the rear guard action, he is picking up the pieces, rehabilitating, restoring. God is the rear guard. In it all, he, he, he does correctly what we do so incorrectly. I recall the time when my little boy, who was little at the time, decided he was going to plant a garden. I knew he was too young, but he was sure he knew how to do it. And so we plowed the ground in our home in Santa Ana, in the backyard. We plowed the patch, and we raked it, and we hoed it, and we harrowed it, and it was all ready for the seed. And then my son took it upon himself to plant the seed. And he made a little ditch, and he planted some seeds, and he covered them in a mound of dirt. They must have been a foot underground. And I said, no, Bob, you make it just a little ditch, cover it lightly, and then pat it down firmly so the air doesn't get to the seed and rot it before it sprouts. So this time he made a little ditch, put some seeds on, spread a fine layer of dust, and stamped it hard with his little feet, and I knew it wasn't right. But at that point, I really couldn't tell him much more, you know. He'd done the job, and he went bursting in the house, and he said, Mommy, I planted the garden, I planted the garden. And then forgetting about it, he ran in the street and began playing with his friends on the bicycle and the roller skates and forgot about the job that he had done incorrectly, clumsily, and awkwardly. Well, I went in the backyard, and I took out that mound of dirt, and I found the seeds, and I planted a new little groove, and I put them in right, and I covered them up, and I stamped them down in a nice straight row. And I didn't tell him. But about three weeks later, when he ba went back there, and the carrots were sprouting, he was jubilant, and he said, Oh, Mom, look at the carrots, how they're growing. I planted them all by myself. There have been many times in my life when I've done things as awkwardly, as incorrectly, as clumsily as my son planted a garden. But God followed up. God in the rear guard action. I say to you here at the turn of the year, if you're carrying in an old box a lot of unnecessary clutter, leave it behind. Let God handle it. If you've hurt someone, pray for him and let God patch the hurt. Arthur Gordon is a favorite writer of mine, and once he came to New York City and to meet and interview Dr. Smiley Blanton, who, with Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, founded the American Foundation for Religion and Psychiatry, of which we have a counseling branch here in our Tower of Hope, competent psychologists who deal with people with problems. Well, Arthur Gordon was waiting in the restaurant for Dr. Blanton to come, and finally the steam psychiatrist came, and he could see that Arthur Gordon's face was frowning, and he looked unhappy, and they said, what's the matter, Arthur? And Arthur said, well, I guess I'm just completely overcome by regret and regrets. If only I had done this, if only I had done that. 
If only I had done this. If only I had done that. Until finally Dr. Blanton said, now just a minute, Arthur. You come with me. And he took Arthur Gordon in his car, drove to his office, pulled out a tape, and began playing it on the tape recorder. And as it started, he said, I'm going to let you listen to three different people. They're all patients of mine. They're all mentally ill. You'll listen to them. And Arthur Gordon had to sit there and listen to an hour tape recording of three sick people talking to their psychiatrist. When it was finished, Dr. Blanton said, what did you notice that all of the people had in common? And Arthur Gordon said, I didn't notice. Then I will tell you, the psychiatrist said. All of them kept using the phrase, if only, if only, if only. If only those words cause sickness. They are poison. Get in the habit of replacing them with these words. Next time I will. Next time I will. Next time I will. These words point to the future, to a new day and a new beginning. They produce healing and health. My friend, this I believe. God is picking up the pieces all the time. He is the rear guard. Isaiah 52, verse 12, the Lord will go before you, and the Lord will be your rear guard. Not only the rear guard, but the vanguard. And what is most important, when we reached our mountain home, and we hadn't been there for a while, the long winding road up to our private place was completely inundated in heavy snow. And so you know what happens. Always it's father or the older brother who is the first to walk through the ankle then knee-deep drifts of snow, and some went almost to our hips. And first, myself and my son, who was bigger than I am. And then the little ones would come. They could follow in our footsteps. God is the vanguard going on ahead. You look into the new year, you try to imagine what it holds, I have news for you. God sees problems coming up for you that you're not even aware of. Well, that's good news. It may not sound it, but it is. What is a leader? A leader is one who, at the head of a business, a company, a corporation, an institution, or a family, the leader is someone who imagines problems that nobody else imagines are going to hit him. And so, I imagine problems that this church will face five, ten years from now. God sees problems coming your way you don't even know about. The next step of a leader is he, he imagines all kinds of solutions to these problems. Then he takes action quietly, subtly, but strongly. He directs and molds and manipulates and shapes events so that the right Solution will just open in front of you when the problem hits you. So God sees problems, but he's got the solution in mind before you even know there's going to be a problem. That's the kind of God we have, the vanguard moving on ahead. Some of you look ahead and you see little hope for the new year because you go into this new year without a friend closest friend you ever had. You lost him. Brother Lawrence wrote a little classic book on the subject I'm speaking about this morning. He called it Practicing the Presence of God. Now, Brother Lawrence was a simple monk who lived in Europe. We know very little about him. We do know that he was converted at the age of 18, converted from unbelief to belief. It happened in the winter time. He was looking at a tree. The tree was dead, it was barren, totally cold. He walked out and touched a dead twig and it snapped and fell to the snow. Then he looked at the dead tree 
And into his mind came the thought, the tree is dead? No. I think it is dead, but it is not. So surely there is a force that will surge within it when the warmth of the spring sun comes. New buds will sprout on dead branches. Beautiful new leaves will unfold. A dead tree will come back to life. There is a destiny. There is an energy. There is a force. There is a power. And it is good. It is good. His name is God. So, God is there ahead of you constantly. I say to you today, this is your hour to give your life to God. What is God's plan for you? God's plan is that he might guide you, lead you. I ask you to give your life to God this morning. Is there some sin that's still been hanging inside of you? Drop it! Is there some dream? Grab it! Is there some goal? Reach for it! Once this whole ship was cast on the beach, one day an old man came as the tide grew higher and higher, and the old man came as the tide was at its highest, and pushed on the bow of the old craft and said, Now, old ship! Now, move out! And at high tide, it moved out. This is your high tide. Move today. Let us pray. Thank you, God, that you are behind us. You are in front of us. You are with us now. And you are moving us, motivating us to make some deep, decisions that will permanently change our life. Your presence, your destiny surrounds us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God give to you his peace in your going out and in your coming in, in your lying down and in your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. you could be with us today. To receive your copy of Dr. Shuler's message today, simply write, it'll be chapter one in his new book, Guidelines to Abundant Living. What a great way to start a new year by following a sure way to an abundant life. Send for your copy today. It will become a popular book in your house. Perhaps you're one of us that never read to Dr. Shuler before. Well, not, why not make today the day to let him know that you're grateful for his ministry and whatever else you have on your heart that you would like to share with him. He does appreciate so very much every letter that is written. And writing that note will add even more to your life and to his also. It always works that way. That address again is Hour of Power, Garden Grove, California. Just Hour of Power, Garden Grove, California. Write today before you do anything else. 
And remember to be sure to ask for the beautiful Hour of Power calendar and perhaps one for a friend too. I know you will appreciate this inspiring and helpful planning calendar. We also want to be sure you know about our round-the-clock telephone counseling service. If you know of someone or if you yourself would like to talk over a need in your life, we have trained telephone counselors on duty night and day. Just dial area code 714 and the letters N-E-W-H-O-P-E. That's 714 New Hope. You will find someone who cares waiting for your call. We invite you to join us again next week when Dr. Schuler brings his second message in this exciting series on Guidelines to Abundant Living. Until then, I'm Ed Arnold wishing you a week that's literally filled with life as abundant as God desires for you. Music today, directed by Sheldon Disrood, featured the Hour of Power Choir, organist Richard Unfried, harpist Rosalie Corson, and soloist Drenda Frenzel. <laughs>